good morning due to the good morning due to the prevailing situation across the world the on the effect of multicultural personality and contact on Chinese domestic students' attitudes towards international students in China. Hello everyone, my name is Ye Qi. Uh, this research was conducted when I studied in Shanghai International Studies University. This study aimed to investigate the effect of multicultural personality and contact on Chinese domestic students' attitudes toward international students in China. I am interested in student groups, interaction, and communication uh, for the reason that students are and will become a strong power um, for the intercultural communication in our world, especially when various challenges are coming. So I want to focus on um, now Chinese students' attitudes toward international students in China, and also what relevant factors will influence such intergroup attitudes, and what kind of actions we can take to promote their intercultural contact. I think this would be very meaningful in our higher education, and also for the society. Uh, this study mainly has three research questions. Um, the first research question is to ask, do Chinese students' contact with international students will influence 
uh, Chinese students' attitudes toward international students. This question originated from Peter Gru's intergroup contact theory, uh, which tells us that in-group members um, more contact with out-group members may reduce in-groups prejudice toward out-groups. There were two hypotheses within this research question. Uh, the hypothesis 1A is that Chinese students who have more uh, contact with international students will have more positive attitudes toward international students. A research, research hypothesis 1B is that Chinese students who have better contact quality with international students will have more positive attitudes toward international students. The second research question is to ask, do Chinese students' multicultural personality influence uh, Chinese students' attitudes toward international students? Uh, multicultural personality is a widely used personality type in the intercultural context. Uh, it was put forward by two Dutch scholars, Van der Zee and Van Oldenhoven from Hohoninga University. And this personality is composed of five dimensions and they are culture empathy, social initiative, emotional stability, openness, and flexibility. And the research hypothesis um, two is that Chinese students who have a more obvious propensity to multicultural personality will have more positive attitudes toward international students. And the third research question is to examine whether these two uh, variables work together to influence attitudes, and specifically it examines the interaction effect. To answer these three research questions, 263 Chinese students were recruited uh, from the Chinese uh, social media WeChat to complete the online questionnaire. And uh, this slide gives you a very basic uh, impression of what the sample uh, looks like. So most participants were recruited from Shanghai and their age ranges from uh, 70 years old to 28 years old. And almost 58% were females and most were freshmen and uh, sophomore. So after the data was collected, um, it was uh, the, the data were analyzed in SPSS version 23. Here, table one gives you the basic uh, statistical parameters such as the means, standard deviations of the mean variables. And we can also see that uh, the reliability of the mean measures of these variables are ranging from 0 0.88 to 0 0.91. And we can also see that uh, the correlations uh, between quality, multicultural personality, and attitudes were statistically significant. Uh, surprisingly, content quantity was not uh, correlated with the rest of these three variables. Uh, therefore, uh, there was ruled out in the following statistical analysis. And then a hierarchical multiple regression was uh, conducted. Um, here we can see that both context quality and multicultural personality uh, were examined have effect uh, attitudes and they were both statistically significant and one unit of difference in contact quality was associated to an average increase of in-group attitudes equaling to 0.34 and after controlling for contact quality, multicultural personality, uh, one unit difference of multicultural personality is associated to an average increase of in-group attitudes equaling to 0.26. Well, and um, the interaction effect of multicultural personality and contact uh, was not statistically significant in this study, and we will have more discussions about this later. And in terms of this research results, let's have a look about the implications. First, implications of this study. So first, this study validates uh, intergroup contact theory and also extends its usage in a Chinese context using student groups. And second, this study also validates the concept of multicultural personality. One point deserves attention is that this study uses the short form of multicultural personality questionnaire with 40 items. 
um, the original version was 91 items. And to the extent of our knowledge, we haven't found any uh, studies conducted in China using short form previously. And we have to be cautious because there are indeed controversial issues about the usage of um, a Western uh, personality type in a non-Western context. Um, at least this study offers some clues about the real reliability of using Chinese student groups. But we still have to be very cautious about using it in a non-Western context. And this is, should also be the future direction for the usage of this questionnaire. We, of course, should need more research to, to test, to further test whether the short form version is applicable to non-Western context and whether if there are some problems. And if we have these problems, how could we revise this short form version? And uh, also, practically speaking, I think this study offers two uh, perspectives to promote intercultural contact between uh, these student groups. Actually, as we can see in the current literature, um, they have reflected that international students worldwide are increasing and also uh, many institutions have started uh, intervention studies to promote uh, student contact. However, we can still say uh, it seems that it's not the status quo is still not very ideal because um, student groups still don't conduct much interaction and meaningful interaction with each other. So I think when high education institutions designed to uh, design different programs or intervention studies, um, contact quality can be a very important factor because um, it would be better to motivate the students to establish significant cultural relationships with students from different countries. And so it's not, contact quality would be a very important key uh, for our Um, it would be very meaningful to study when they were uh, in university and expect mm. Traits are comparatively stable, and but we can still think about, but we can actually when they accept university. communication in Of course, this study has communication is about the sample. So uh, uh, it would be also very helpful to would be very interesting and meaningful if we could conduct longitudinal studies. For example, we can test these variables when our students first entered the university, for example, when they were freshmen. And then um, during their years in university, we can keep tracking these variables so that we can track the changes of these variables. And during the theoretical paper. But also,
then the last step is true desirability because this study and um, this study also actually four items don't offer very good reliability. So uh, future research should uh, be recognized as a measure of social desirability and also use more reliable. and question is warmly welcome at the bottom of this slide. So if you have any comments or any things, any criticisms, I really welcome and to so Elsa Roy is a doctoral candidate in the journalism and mass communication from the University of Calcutta, India. Roy has conducted field research in Pacific Northwest, Minnesota, India and Bangladesh. Her research examines environmental movements involving multicultural ethnic groups and minorities in the global south documented in musical mangrove film. Roy teaches video production at UMN and critical media at Gustavus Adolphus College, US. Elsa Roy is presenting her paper on transnational environmental movement, a case study of Sundarbans. Sundarban Nijay Pradesh. Amra Monikuri. The Sundar Bonner of our
সুন্দরবনে একশো টা দেশ থেকে সুন্দরবনে আসে সুন্দরবনকে উপভোগ করতে ইকো ট্যুরিজিয়ামের নামে যে উল্লাস যে আনন্দ চলছে সুন্দরবনবাসী হিসাবে আমরা প্রত্যেকটা মানুষ আমরা অখুশি এত নোংরা করে যাচ্ছে নদীবক্ষে নদীবক্ষে যে জলজ যে প্রাণী কটা আছে ডলফিন কুমির হোয়াইট ফিস ভেটকি বাড্ডা এই ধরনের সুন্দরবনে একশো দশ কুড়ি প্রজাতির মাছ আমরা আনুমানিক আমরা করে বলছি যেটা দেখতে পাচ্ছি চোখে তো সেই প্রজাতির মাছ কটা অচিরিয়ে ধ্বংস হচ্ছে কেননা মোটর ভেহিক্যান্স চলছে সিক্স সিলিন্ডার ফোর সিলিন্ডার ইঞ্জিন জঙ্গলের ইন্টারন্যাশনাল কোর এরিয়া দিয়ে চলছে তারা তো এই সিক্স সিলিন্ডার ফোর সিলিন্ডারের যে সাইলেন্সিয়ার দিয়ে যে কালো ধোঁয়াটা উঠছে এই কালো ধোঁয়া টোটাল ম্যানগ্রোভের উপরে একটা কালো স্পট পড়ে কিছুদিন পরেই তারা রৌদ্রের তাপে অচিরেই তারা মৃত্যুর কবলে ঢলে পড়ছে হাজার হাজার লক্ষ লক্ষ ম্যানগ্রোভ মৃত্যুন্ন হয়ে যাচ্ছে আমরা সুন্দরবন ভাষী বাসী হিসাবে আমরা ইকো টিউরিজিয়ামে যারা নামে আসছে তাদেরকে আমরা ধিক্কারে জানাই আমরা পছন্দ করি না থার্মোকল মদের বোতল প্লাস্টিক নদীবক্ষে এরা নোংরা করে যাচ্ছে তার ফলে কি হচ্ছে ন্যাচারালি যে ম্যানগ্রোভ কটা হচ্ছে তার গ্রোথ নষ্ট করছে এখানকার যারা মাছ কাঁকড়া ধরে বন জঙ্গলের উপর নির্ভরশীল হয়ে থাকে এই ফিশারম্যান মোম মধু তাদের উপরে ঠিক দৃষ্টিকটু নেই আমরা দেখেছি ইতিমধ্যে চার হাজার বিষয় পঁচাশি বর্গ কিলোমিটার সুন্দরবনের যে ব্যাঘ্র প্রকল্প যে আয়তন ভাগ তারা তৈরি করেছে তেরোটা বোলাকে তারা ভাগ করেছে পাঁচটা বোলাক হচ্ছে বাফার এরিয়া আর আটটি বোলাক হচ্ছে কোর এরিয়া প্রথম আমাদের প্রশ্ন এই সুন্দরবনের বন দপ্তরের কাছে সুন্দরবনের বাসি হিসেবে প্রশ্ন করি যে সুন্দরবনের একটি অধিবাসীদের নিয়ে আলোচনা না করে কি করে কোর বাফার জোন ভাগ করলেন এটা আমাদের প্রথম দাবি রক্ষাকারী যত বাহিনী আছে সবটাকে ব্যবহার করে তাদের সমস্ত শক্তি ব্যবহার করে ওখানে তাদের প্রভাব প্রতিপত্তি হুমকি দ্বারা হামলা দ্বারা প্রভাব প্রতিপত্তি তারা বজায় রেখেছে এবং আপনারা হয়তো দেখেও থাকবেন যে ওখানে রামপাল বিদ্যুৎ কেন্দ্রের প্ল্যান্টের যে পক্ষে এই ওখানে জনগণকে বাধ্য করা হয়েছে সেই মানব বন্ধনে দাঁড়াতে আমাদের কাছে এমন অনেক তথ্য আছে ডাটা আছে এই ধরনের হুমকি হামলা এবং সেখানে জাতীয় কমিটি সহ অন্যান্য ব্যক্তিবর্গ যারা নিজেদের মানে স্বতঃস্ফূর্ত অংশগ্রহণের জায়গা থেকে রামপাল বিদ্যুৎ প্ল্যান্টের বিপক্ষে এটা সরিয়ে নেওয়ার জন্য কথা বলতে গিয়েছেন তারাই ওখানে হামলা এবং হুমকি সম্মুখীন হয়েছে এখানে ব্যাপারটা এরকম দাঁড়ায় যে 
আমাদের প্রকৃতিকে আমরা আমাদের চেয়ে ছোট হিসেবে দেখি আমরা অবদমন করি প্রকৃতিকে প্রতিনিয়তই মানুষ তার প্রকৃতিকে অবদমন করে তার ফ্লারিশমেন্ট তার ডেভেলপমেন্ট কে জারি রাখে এবং এই ডেভেলপমেন্ট আসলে আমরা মনে করি যে জনগণের পক্ষের না জনগণ বলতে আমি এখানে একেবারেই রাজনৈতিক ভাবে জনগণ বলছি না আমি একেবারেই বলছি মানুষের যে বেঁচে থাকা মানুষের জীবন যাপন মানুষের সাংস্কৃতিক এবং মানসিক যে চর্চা এটা বিঘ্ন ঘটিয়ে এখানে ডেভেলপমেন্ট থিওরি বারবার করে কাজ করিয়ে যাচ্ছে প্রত্যেকটা ডেভেলপমেন্ট প্রজেক্টের পিছনে সরকার ব্যতীত সরকারের প্রত্যক্ষ সমর্থনে কিন্তু সরকার নিজস্ব প্রজেক্ট বাদ দিয়ে ও সরকার সবসময় ব্যবসায়ী প্রতিষ্ঠান এবং বিশেষ করে বাংলাদেশের ক্ষেত্রে অন্যান্য দেশের ব্যবসায়ী প্রতিষ্ঠানকে এখানে জায়গা করে দেয় এবং ব্যবসায়ী প্রতিষ্ঠান সব সময় চেষ্টা করবে তার সর্বোচ্চ মুনাফা সর্বোচ্চ তার সুবিধা এবং সর্বোচ্চ তার যে প্রফিট এটাকেই আদায় করার চেষ্টা করবে আমরা আমি একজনের কথা বিশেষভাবে বলতে চাই ভারতের যে ইকো ফ্যামিলি সোশিও কালচারাল অ্যাক্টিভিটিজের মধ্যে যে আছেন বন্দনা শিবার কথা বলতে চাই বন্দনা এখানে বারবার করে বলেছেন যে এখানে বায়ো ডাইভার্সিটি এখানে গুরুত্বপূর্ণ ব্যাপার অতটা প্রফিট প্রফিট হচ্ছে সেটা গুরুত্বপূর্ণ ব্যাপার না বন্দনা সবসময় বলছেন যে এখানে কত একটা টোটাল বাস্কেটের কথা হিসাব করতে বলছেন উনি যে একটা ল্যান্ডে কতখানি কত ধরনের ডাইভার্সিটি যুক্ত কত প্রক্রি প্রকারের ফল ফুল শস্য উৎপাদন হয় এটাই গুরুত্বপূর্ণ বিষয় গুরুত্বপূর্ণ বিষয় এটা না যে কতখানি কত বেশি পরিমাণে তুলা উৎপাদন হচ্ছে কত বেশি পরিমাণে আম উৎপাদন হচ্ছে এইটা গুরুত্বপূর্ণ বিষয় না আমরা এইখান থেকে এই সুন্দরবন আন্দোলন থেকেও আমরা সবসময় এটা প্রায়োরিটি দিয়েছি এটাই আমরা প্রথমে ভেবেছি যে প্রকৃতি প্রকৃতি লগ্ন থাকাই মানুষের প্রধান এবং তাদের প্রাইমাল স্ট্রাকচার এখন জাতীয় কমিটির যে বিকল্প প্রস্তাবনা তারা আপনারা দেখবেন যে তাদের বিকল্প প্রস্তাবনায় তারা বলছেন যে অনেক কম খরচে অনেক কম সময়ে নবায়নযোগ্য যে বিদ্যুৎ পদ্ধতি এই এই পদ্ধতিতেই সবচেয়ে জনগণের সুবিধা রেখে তাদেরকে কোনো রকমের কোনো জমি অধিগ্রহণ না করে সরকারি প্রক্রিয়ায় সরকারি যে প্রতিষ্ঠানগুলো আছে বাংলাদেশের বিজ্ঞানীদেরকে ব্যবহার করি এখানে এই নবায়নযোগ্য বিদ্যুতের যে প্রস্তাবনা দেওয়া হয়েছে এই প্রস্তাবনায় আসলে পরিষ্কার করে উল্লেখ করা হয়েছে যে নবায়নযোগ্য বিদ্যুতই ভবিষ্যতে বিদ্যুৎ প্রক্রিয়া সুন্দরবন The world's largest mangrove forest is also a UNESCO World Heritage Site. The mangrove not only fosters a unique biodiversity, including 7.2 million people and the Royal Bengal Tigers, but also protects densely populated cities like Kolkata and Dhaka from tropical cyclones that arise from the Bay of Bengal. <laughs> Oh, 
जलर जो दापट बा मशार कमड़ो खे प्रत्येक मान प्रति नियत प्रकृत साथ लड़ाई कर चले मैनेटर टाइप हिंस्र टाइप सुंदरबन जंगल शब्द दूषण कर फिर प्राणी गो सब भेतरे चले जाए प्राणी देखा जाए ना टोटल जो एरिया आज तरह एक परिसंख्यन पे प्राय तीन हजार क्रस कर दिए व्याघ्रो विधवा लहाड़ीपुर अंचले बसटा ग्रामे डोर टू डोर सार्वे कर देखे दूहजार छय साल फरेस्ट रईड एक्टर पर देखे दूस पंचाश जन छड़ी गए व्याघ्र विधवा तर स्वामी मृत्यु कबले तारा चले ग बाघर को पेटे तरह छोटो छोटो बाल बाच्चा नहीं बहू बाच्चा नहीं तरह कूड़े घरे गुमड़े गुमड़े तरह कादे तरह विकल्प को रास्ता नहीं विकल्प को लाइवलीहुडे को चिंताधारा बर्तमान सरकार करा एलिक स्थानीय प्रशासन करा तई हम चाहिए को सहृदय व्यक्तिगण को एनजीओ जो इसे ये मानुषे पशे दाड़ा टाइगर With climate change and sea level rise, saltwater encroaches. As the islands keep submerging, tigers are more inclined 
to invade human habitats. Despite the opposition in Bangladesh, work at Rampal power plant continues as of June 2020. Since the archipelago sits on Bengal Delta, climate change makes unprecedented storms a frequent event. The region barely recovered from the 2009 cyclone Isla. In November 2019, it was hit by cyclone Bulbul, and in May 2020, it was hit by cyclone Amphan. A death toll of more than 100 is only the tip of an iceberg of the destruction it has caused. Miles of embarkments were breached, and the saltwater inundation will make the fields barren for years. Amphan was the deadliest storm the region has seen in past two centuries. But unfortunately, it might not be the last. Don't mess with Sundarbans, said climate fiction writer Amita Bukhosh, who has written extensively about the region during one of his post Amphan talks. Sundarbans is the first in line of defense that saves millions from these cyclones. But the voices from these forests, be it the voices of its flora and fauna, or be it the voices of the 7.2 million people, are muted. Are we listening to them? If not now, then when will we? I 
Dr. Sean Le Coeur is a practice academic at International Business School, Suzu, IBSS, Yon Gitong, in Liverpool University, a deputy head of the Department of Accounting at IBSS and project leader of IBSS at Data Mining Lab. Dr. Jean Le Coeur will be presenting his paper on dialectics of rationality in managerial control system and intercultural adaptation. A holistic perspective. Hello, hello everybody. Uh, I'm Jean-Yves Lecour. Um, I'm a senior teaching fellow at uh, Xi'an Kong Liverpool University uh, based in Suzhou in China. I'm also a researcher at the uh, University of Strasbourg in France at the Beta Scenarius Laboratory, where I do conduct uh, some research on managerial control theory. Uh, thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to make this presentation today at the IAICS conference, which I've attended many times in the past. Um, I'm going to uh, explain, uh, introduce um, um, one paper I'm working on at the moment. Uh, as you can see, the title is Contribution of the Zhong Dao Model, uh, Integrative Model of Management to Rethink Managerial Control Theory in the global contemporary context. I, I had uh, uh, that chance to attend Professor uh, 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 Gomin Shan's presentation in Hong Kong at the IAICS uh, conference a uh, few years ago in Hong Kong since 2016. Um, and um, since then, uh, I came back to, to, to that concept and um, try to put it uh, into, into some uh, research I'm doing at the moment. So I'm very pleased to, 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 to explain here uh, about this, this project. Um, well, um, I, I should say my, my, my research journey has, has actually moved quite a bit actually from multicultural uh, to what I call um, uh, management theory. And I think, um, I think that thinking management models in, uh, in a more uh, uh, global uh, or integrative view is actually um, um, a, a, a very good uh, um, uh, development in, uh, in, in uh, multicultural management as well. Just a brief introduction uh, for those who may not be familiar with managerial control theory. Um, everybody knows about the balance scorecard, for example. Uh, but uh, scholars have tried to actually provide uh, models and uh, more holistic views as well of what you know, managerial control models are. Um, and on this uh, uh, framework that you can see on the slide from Ferrer and Oakley, uh, the purpose of these authors was actually to provide this kind of holistic view of what managerial controls actually are. So, you, of course, here you, you may recognize um, things you might be familiar with, uh, performance measures, um, how we, we fix uh, objectives, target setting in organizations, how we monitor those objectives, but actually 
Also, this may depend on the strategic objective of the organizations, how we define uh, key success factors. There are several components here which are necessary to be in place uh, to, to uh, design and implement managerial control systems. Well, um, that's one way to, to, to modelize it and to, to, to see it. Um, and, uh, well, um, uh, what we can say is that coming you know, from the side of managerial control theory, um, a lot of these developments in, uh, in this area have uh, fo uh, I mean, research developments have, uh, have focused on trying to contextualize these models. So what are these external factors which affect those models and how they affect those models? And that's a little bit the way scholars try to understand more about the complexity of these models, because actually when we try to understand how this model works, um, there are a lot of uh, differences uh, in uh, how it, it uh, can be implemented, designed and implemented. Um, so um, coming from that, uh, actually culture here, as you can see, is one of these factors, of course. Uh, coming from that, uh, to respond to that in growing complexity in, in management control theory, then maybe let's come back to the John Deere model uh, and how this could help here. Um, well, uh, a few uh, remindings about the John Deere model. It's an ambicultural model that integrates the philosophical assumptions of Chinese management and incorporates some common features of Western management. So, well, in that paper from Professor Chen, um, uh, you, you, you know, we will um, see um, more uh, uh, explanations about uh, the origination of this, of this model. And uh, especially here, you have three dimensions. And those three dimensions do actually uh, reflect uh, the paradigmatic assumptions of Chinese management from epistemological perspective, axiological, and methodological perspectives. And so, if you think about self cultivation here, for example, uh, this actually is the epistemological uh, dimension here. Uh, it represents the affective ability to purify and liberate oneself through the unceasing learning process of individuals. Uh, context profundity um, is more like the axiological um, dimension here, and it's actually about the cognitive ability to proficiently understand the environment context and acquire cultural knowledge in the process of management. And action dexterity is more maybe the methodological dimension here, and the ability to act appropriately and effectively in the interactional process of, of management. And think about Weiji, for example, um, in Chinese, um, in Chinese uh, philosophy, risk is, is opportunity. Uh, and this is actually something managers actually here uh, actually in China do practice, I think, uh, a lot. So the, the objective of the research is how the John Da model, and, and I forgot, yeah, I need to explain that if you look at those other uh, sub dimensions here of the model, uh, as we can see, we have creativity, multi multicultural mindset, and we have uh, interaction adroitness. Well, this are more like the common features of Western management that you can um, connect to, the, to those um, uh, dimensions we have explained before. And, uh, and so, yes, so, so the, the model integrates these common features of Western management, which is more about analysis, categorization, rationality, they are also here inside, inside this model. So the, the model takes uh, um, more Chinese particularities you maybe at the beginning, but it aims to integrate also uh, some features of the of, of Western management. So the question is that how does that model uh, help us to 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 respond to the challenge in in, manage, in recent developments of managerial control theory? Um, well, uh, I think from from what I can see, um, being an accountant by background. And um, through, through you know recent publications, also participating in, um, in, in several conferences in that particular field of uh, accounting, um, I, there, there, there is actually a, a 
some concerns about a managerial control theory uh, having to to come back to its theoretical foundations and uh, uh, as the environment also uh, is becoming more more complex and certain then uh, this um, approach to uh, theorizing in managerial control has also focused more and more on on complexity how to embrace the complexity uh, well um, th there is I think uh, an overall belief that uh, managerial control systems have not yet embraced uh, uh, that level of complexity, uh, which uh, it should, uh, as it should. Um, and um, well, some of the reasons for that, uh, as you can see uh, in one of, uh, of the comments here from uh, from scholars, uh, one of the reasons is, is to say that. Uh, manager control theory is more is too deterministic and objective approach, uh, maybe too traditional, um, coming from that that discipline, and that could be one of the reasons uh, why uh, reconcept, reconceptualizing of these models maybe as 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 not embraced that complexity. Um, and another dimension, if you want to do that. Yes, we may need to review the paradigmatic assumptions of managerial control, but this may also require to have a more interdisciplinary approach. And here we can see also some developments trying to bring psychology, socio-cognitive theories um, into, into um, managerial control, um, into that field of managerial control. Well, so what is the objective of the research? Well, we try to understand where uh, managerial con control theory does stand now, more from a, a Western perspective uh, for, for the moment. And there are three main trends, as you can see. Uh, here I mentioned about constructivism, dialogical, and pragmatism. And pragmatism. So the, those three uh, themes uh, seems to be more more uh, visible now and, and uh, uh, where you can find most of the developments now so we try to, to focus on on recent uh, publications and and those gaps that we still can see into that so, those three dimensions and um, yeah we try to understand these, these gaps in uh, which uh, scholars uh, researchers says in uh, those attempts to uh, re uh, theorize uh, uh, managerial control. Then the research gaps are categorized and interpreted uh, in three perspectives, uh, which are the ones of the Jungda model that we explained before, epistemological, methodological, and axiological as well. So, um, so we, we try to analyze these gaps and see uh, and, 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 and see how the, the, the Jongda model um, can help to interpret these, these, uh, these gaps. Um, uh, we and what we conclude, what we want to conclude, that the Jongda model, as a basis for the development of theoretical frameworks um, uh, 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 for further qualitative research in managerial control theory. So I've been involved in managerial in qualitative research in that field using constructivist models of learning. And uh, as we know, um, we 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 need some theoretical background and framework to be able to investigate those those phenomena on the ground that can serve. And uh, then join the model as a way to be uh, to, to, to integrate several uh, philosophical assumptions, maybe in connections with other, other, other kind of theories, uh, then um, this actually can provide a, a strategy for researchers to um, uh, investigate uh, uh, in, 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 in some new, new models and, um, and, uh, uh, and, uh, implement implement the research in that way. Uh, just a very brief example of uh, what we you know we can do in that in that in that research. Here is a, a, 
one of the uh, framework which has been proposed by Hotline TCA in 2012 uh, in an attempt to take a more holistic, integrated approach of internal control. They actually revisited Simon's levels of, of control framework, and they have introduced uh, new concepts here. Uh, the fact that you have two groups of actors, managers, and employees. Managers have intentions, employees have perceptions. Uh, and uh, they actually, in, in that paper, they actually uh, to understand more about uh, managerial control systems. What are these different types of controls? It could be social or technical, the objective, other choices also regarding the use of these controls. It could be interactive, diagnostic, diagnostic, diagnostic controls, enabling constraining control. So here is the new model, which is pro proposed here, as you can see in that chart. Um, how could uh, the Jongda model and how could uh, uh, new paradigmatic uh, assumptions here that we explained before help to, to, to apply to that uh, revised framework? Well, what we know is that some of the advantage of that a framework proposed by Hotline and TCA aims to embrace paradox, so that's a good thing, and also, uh, also provide more background from beliefs, boundary systems, and also interactions between the components of the manager of control system. So it goes into the right direction, but there are still quite a lot of limitations here. It's stable, it's not dynamic, it does not um, address the interactions between the participants. Uh, only the components, but not the participants inside, you no, know, the individuals, the actors, you know, who act in the design of, of the, uh, in practice of, of the control systems, does not really uh, define very clearly what we mean by rationality in performance management systems as well. And it does not really focus also on performance measures, uh, uh, but measures could be important as they are also, they represent the way that people construct reality in a more constructivist approach of uh, manager of control. Uh, so, uh, well, I, I, I guess you know, um, the, the, the paradigmatic assumptions we explained before could also maybe keep, help keep further forward here on, on this question. Thank you very much for, for your attention. And uh, um, if you'd like to share more or um, uh, I would be happy to answer any question you may have. Please uh, contact me by email. And here is my email at the university and also uh, my personal email. Thank you very much for your attention. Bye-bye. Ms. Yayuan Q graduated from the Chinese University.
Miss Yayuan Q graduated from the Chinese University of Hong Kong. She became a lecturer in the Fourth Military Medical University in China, and since 2019, she has been a full-time PhD student supervised by Professor Zhirong Guo in the School of Foreign Studies in Jean Jutan University. Her favorite research area is translation studies. She is interested in the theory of embodied cognitive linguistics and its integration with translation. Her previous publications are about college English teaching in China and TCM. Translation. She will be presenting a paper on English translation of traditional Chinese medicine terms of the theory of Yin Yang and five elements of the perspective of embodied cognitive linguistics with 78 TCM terms from the inner canon of Hungary as examples co-authored by Ya Yun Ko and Professor Zhirong Guo, China. Hello, I'm Ya Yun and from Xi'an Jiao Tong University. I'm honored and very happy to share my research reflection with all of you. When I prepare for the conference, I come up with the idea that it is probably the time we can look at the embodied cognitive linguistics research. And I particularly put very much thoughts into how we can advance the theory of ECL through TCM translation study using a variety of methods. Before I start, I would like to invite you to think about three questions here. This is the thing we are talking about today. Here is the outline. First, I will have a brief overview of theoretical development. Cognitive linguistics has gained a great ground in the field of linguistics, attention and wide recognition in the research. We also noted that the development of embodied cognitive linguistic, which is a recent and organic integration of CL and cognitive science, and also conceptual metaphor, which is a core in ECL research. Now, I will go into the cognitive linguistics, rebellion to generative linguistics at many levels. I would like to focus on the framework of linguistics theory by looking at the two major accounts. As Lankoff Johnson called, there are the objectivist account and the experientialist account. First, the objectivist account is a complex story. It believes that the concepts are defined by objective feature of reality and have nothing to do with our bodies. Now let's see the experientialist account. There are major proposals that cognitive linguistics respond to. First of all, CL thinks that memory attention can characterize the way that we perceive and process information. Second, Language arises as a result of abstraction and generalization of human experience. Thirdly, CL believes that language is not born, it is learned in social interaction. Here, we may safely draw the conclusion that CL regards that the concept is based on my body and bodily interactions with reality. To a large extent, the concept becomes embodied through image schema, and the abstract concepts can be embodied by metaphor. More importantly, the ECL emphasizes that the human can build universal metaphors on the basis of bodily experience. Different from conventional metaphors, 
conceptual metaphor helps us create our system of knowledge. A CM maps the scheme of a bodily experience, the source domain, B1, onto a more difficult to understand abstract target domain, D2. In Chinese to English translation practice, D2 is conventionally translated into English. Let's move on to the materials and method part. The inner canon of Huangdi, as we all know, is a core East Asian medical and philosophical classic, but it is difficult to translate because of the concept forms of language with profound implications. Here, we choose six translated texts and some passage genesis terms to illustrate our reflection on our research. And I particularly focus on Chinese Xu and its translation for the case study. Here, we refer to one important principle in cognitive translation research. Cognitive equivalence would be the equivalence between source language and target language in terms of the form of things that the respective receivers have in mind, as shown by the mappings of CM. Cowper's search plays a fundamental role in identifying patterns of words that occur systematically together. Here is a major component we will use in the future research. Now let's see what we have got. First, we look for the definition of Chinese Xu in three different dictionaries. And we also get the concordance hits of Chu's English translation in the bilingual parallel corpus we built ourselves. We found there are four CM mapping tabs. In the later work, we have to focus on the D1's domain and D2's domain to check if there are any similar mapping condition or if D2's domain is similar to D1's. Why? As we have said, D2 is conventionally translated into English. If D1 is D2, we can have a good translation. According to the etymology and collocates of Chinese Xu, we found that Chinese Xu means empty, deficiency, and weak. And the CM in the source domain is typically container metaphor. And for log dice, the higher its value, the stronger the bond between the collocate and the node. According to the etymology and collocates of empty, we found in Old English, it means containing nothing, and it most frequently collocates with bottle and stomach. For deficiency, we found that it usually collocates with vitamin and syndrome. It shows that we often use the word in the medical context. And also the other words. What will happen in the inner canon of Huangdi? We have found two examples to prove what we suggest. The data and the evidence prove that there is a similar mapping condition in translating Xu in TCM. And obviously, Chinese Xu shares the same domain with empty, that is, container. The domain container is presented in both English and Chinese languages 
and used as container method according to EZL. So is deficiency. To conclude, we first introduce the methods of retrieving and analyzing linguistic data and the principle of cognitive equivalence. We have observed the metaphors that Xu realizes in Chinese and those realized by its translations in English and compares their figurative and medical meanings. And it is noted that our conceptual system is embodied with some examples in TCM. And the chief mechanism that can make abstract concepts embodied is metaphor. So much for the presentation. And thank you very much. Won Yunjia graduated from University of International Relations in 2011 and has been working in Harbin Institute of Technology as lecturer of French since 2013. Her research includes the topic French teaching method, intercultural communication. Her published work includes articles about the first step of French studies and articles about French teaching method. Wang Yongjia will be presenting her paper on integration of cultural and language teaching in the French as second foreign language course. Hello everyone, I'm Wang Yongjia from Harbin Institute of Technology in China. It is my first time to participate, participate in an international conference and um, it I'm very honored to share my teaching experiences with you. My presentation is about integration of culture and language teaching um, in the French as second language course. My teaching task is mainly for students who are interested in French studies by choosing an optional course. That means it is different from the majors with less time and low frequency. But the requirements are similar, and students' interest in language as well as in culture is not diminished. We need to keep students in the class and help them learn the language well. Based on that situation, the contradiction exists, which is also the first part of my presentation. The other two are mind map and destinations. Let me explain the keyword contradiction. In my point of view, the courses are generally composed by curiosity and rules. As teachers, we use classroom rules to let students understand the language rules. Both of them are disliked by learners. Sometimes we use their curiosity to have a better achievement. As students, when they take the initiative to come to a foreign language class, their curiosity is huge. The words, the grammar, or we can say all the language rules are not important. But the culture and the sentences that they like, and for example, everyone want, wants to know how to say I love you in French. So here is the contradiction. How to solve this problem? Let's move to the second part. The second part is composed by uh, four uh, steps. Uh, first, learning interest. Second, teaching objectives. And third, interest plus content. And finally, a better class. So first, we need to think as a student. If I learn a new language, what is most interesting for me? At the same time, I'm the teacher of the course. There are teaching tasks that I have to accomplish. Then what we should do is to put them together and mix them until we know our students better and the class will be more and more attractive. Let me give you an example. The bees in French is very famous and very French when we greet someone else. So students may think, what is a bees? How to greet? a friend in the French way. Actually, it is not 
complicated to make explanations. But we want to have an active class and a real dialogue scene with the dialogues in the book in the text textbook we can perform the dialogues with students as you know there are two u in french there are du and bu which is similar to chinese at the same time the cultures are quite different so i can perform the dialogue with vu first and imagine that it is the first time for the student and me to meet each other we say the sentences by shaking hands, and that is normal. Then we change the characters. We turn to be very good friends. We say different words to greet each other. And we faire la bise. Generally, the students don't know what to do at that time. Then it is my turn to explain the details and the method. After that, we perform the dialogue again with smoother movements through the interactions with with students we can know the students better have a closer relationship establish a relaxed atmosphere this is a positive circle in our university at the beginning of studies the first course is composed by 32 hours the objectives are pronunciation Dialogues are about greetings, self-introduction, self questions about things and persons, visiting and dining in the restaurant, and so on. In each part, we can arrange the similar activity. For example, we can introduce the behaviors in a restaurant, how to use the tableware, most of students cannot identify the use of tableware. We can move the tables and chairs in the classroom to imagine that we are in a restaurant. Teachers could take some glasses, knife, and fork to the classroom. Besides, when we visit someone, the habits are also different. As Chinese, or we can say as most Asians, we like to arrive a little earlier. But you know in France, it is uh, um, polite to be late. Generally, no more than 50 minutes. Students can perform the same dialogue, dialogue in Chinese way and in French way. The real action can inspire their thinking. Finally, let's talk about destinations. When the class is over, the studies will not end. So we can have a good beginning through the efforts that we make. I hope that the course can enhance a student's learning interest and the language, the culture can finally inspire their ideas. The language is like the tea leaf and the culture is like the tea fragrance. Without making tea, we cannot have a sweet smell. That is my presentation. Thank you for your listening. Hong In Lan is an associate professor at Fukuoka Jogakuin University, Japan. He has completed his BA in English Education and PhD in Communication. He will now be presenting a paper on the topic, What Differences the Two Weeks Make, a Project Report. Hello everyone, my name is Hong Yen Lan and I'd like to share my research study on a 500 project. Uh, the title is, What Differences Can Two Weeks Make? This project was inspired by Professor Tina Siddiq's $5 challenge. What she did basically was to give uh, each group of students uh, one envelope which had $5 as their seed funding. And they had much time to plan, to come up, to brainstorm, to come up their plan. But once they opened the envelope, they only had two hours to implement their plan. The goal of this project was to generate as much money as possible. And the, ev the evaluation was based on a three minute presentation of their project. Uh, the result turned out to be very diverse and inventive. For this project, here's my version of pro uh, the 500 yen uh, project. Uh, 
my students had two weeks uh, to brainstorm and to conduct their project. Uh, team members are voluntary, meaning they can, uh, they can find their own uh, members. They can find their friends. They can invite their friends to be their team members. And they were given uh, 500 Japanese yen, which was about $5. And their goal was to maximize the value. Uh, the evaluation uh, was based on their presentation and summary report. The major goals for this project was to help students improve their autonomy, teamwork, and creativity. So, uh, as a result, um, two classes with 56 students and 54 of them chose to participate in the project. In total, there were 12 groups. By the first class, out of 18 students, 17 of them participated. There are three teams. As you can see from this form, all three teams decided to sell drinks or snacks at a departmental event. And the first team, Team Almonds, they made 610 Japanese yen as their profit. Class two, uh, there are 48 students and 37 of them par participated in the project. There are nine teams in total. So as you can see from here, the highlighted, the uh, Highlighted groups are groups that didn't use the fund, uh, the fund of 500 yen at all. Um, in total, there are three um, three categories emerged. So the first two are team team autumn and team Mars. They uh, conducted uh, two research two research studies. Uh, team autumn investigated how people view. Uh, 100 yen, how people of generations view 100 yen and what they would do with it. And uh, Team Mars, the second team, uh, they didn't use the 500 yen. Instead, they uh, investigated people's perceptions uh, of 500 yen and what they would do with it. And two groups uh, had cultural exchange. For example, t Team N Jam. Uh, because they have one Nepali student, so they decided to make traditional Nepalese coasters using wool. So this is a cultural experience and the members uh, learned how to make uh, traditional Nepalese coasters. And Team Dinosaur didn't use the 500 yen either, uh, basically because they had two foreign students. So each student, each member uh, brought a dish, their traditional dish, and then they had a potluck party and had a fun time exchanging their, their cultures. And the majority of um, act, the majority uh, of the project activities was charity and voluntary uh, activities. So five teams decided to uh, not using the 500 yen at all, and then they conducted different uh, voluntary activities. Uh, for example, Team Unknown, they decided to uh, conduct a non-demoya activities within one, uh, one hour and a half. So basically what they did is they went to one uh, area of downtown, downtown area, and then there they approached people and then initiated conversations and asked them if there's there was anything they can do. And then the anyone, um, those people are, um, if they wanted to give some money as uh, as a reward, uh, they, were, they were welcome to do to do so. So in this way, they were able to collect 3,850 Japanese yen uh, as their profit. So here's some photos of um, the uh, the activities that uh, each that different groups conducted. I hope this can give you some uh, a better picture of what they did. And this is a charity uh, donation. Students collected uh, donation money. Um, in five days, they talked to. They were able to talk to 132 students on campus. 
and in the end they were able to collect this much this amount of money and this is team autumn by researching how different generations view 100 yen and what they would do with it so after the presentations uh, one questionnaire was conducted and the students were asked the participants were asked to submit the questionnaire within one week so in the end out of 54 participants there were 50 valid response uh, responses the main questions of the questionnaire included motivational factor, factors um, so what are what are the reasons that you decided to participate in the project and what are the challenges and benefits of participation so how do you view value now the first one the reasons for participation um, there are two groups of motivators extrinsic and intrinsic so extrinsic motivators um, the majority was to get a good credit so they're guaranteed at the beginning of the project if they decide to choose uh, to choose to participate in the project they will get a good cred credit and uh, also some students said uh, they were invited in, they were invited by a friend so uh, because it was hard for them to say no that's why they decided to join the teamwork and also because some uh, a few students uh, sat at the wrong seat uh, students were asked to sit as groups and some students who were absent previous in the previous class um, accidentally sat at the group place so naturally they become a group member and had to do the project and also some students uh, found it was easier uh, to work on the project than writing a 2000 word report at the beginning of the class they were uh, given choices one is to participate in the project or if they do not want to work with others they can also choose to uh, write a 2000 word report individually so these are the extrinsic motivators and the intrinsic motivators uh, are here as follows uh, first some people thought it might be fun and some students said they didn't have experience like this that's why they would like to participate and many of them think many of them thought it was a good opportunity for self-growth and a way of connecting with others uh, they can also improve their communication skills and their problem solving ability. Three major challenges or conflicts occurred. Uh, the first one is time, second is differences, the last one was decision making and responsibility sharing. Uh, regarding time, many of them said they didn't really have any time or very little time for group discussion, for brainstorming. And if the member the more members in with the group the harder the situation became differences uh, due to the differences in members opinions ways of thinking and behaviors uh, it took a long time to brainstorm for a plan or an answer and some students felt conflict because of the different opinions and um, some people said they didn't they didn't get heard so not everyone could get a chance to voice themselves uh, voice herself and conflict also occurred because of differences in uh, perceptions of private priority and behaviors and the last one decision making and responsibility sharing um, many students reported that it was hard because of the differences in opinions and because of all the differences and it was hard to get consensus and the workload was not uh, equally distributed and there was an imbalance uh, some teams didn't have any team leader and the team leaders time management was really challenging and uh, groups with uh, foreign students reported that it was hard sometimes to convey their meanings correctly with foreign students but there are more uh, much more benefits uh, of participation as the follows there are six categories connections with others uh, building new relationship many many students said uh, they could uh, develop a new relationship with uh, new people and uh, they can they could also get a chance to 
uh, deepen their connections with others. And number two, diversity in opinions and perspective because of the diverse opinions and perspectives. So they could get their perspective enriched and they also had some new discoveries. Number three, advocating the self. Many reported that they found it really awkward and difficult to advocate themselves. But through this project, they learned uh, the importance of self-advocating and then they learned to practice a little bit. Four, feeling of accomplishment. So through teamwork, uh, working towards, towards a common goal, uh, some reported that they felt great team synergy, a synergy and um, they had great joy and feeling of accomplishment and they found it really rewarding. Number five, communication. Communication skills and presentation skills were improved and uh, some students also developed their autonomy. They became more efficient and some said that it was a great experience in managing the conflict. And the last ones had is regarded uh, is related to self understanding and um, they realized that it was necessary to ask for help from others um, they also learned more about the, the self uh, get more confidence and they also they realized that not only under the were not only through the project they not only uh, depend their understanding of foreign students uh, but also could uh, have have more deeper understanding of their own culture. Uh, perceptions of value of the diverse, uh, their diverse perceptions of value. For example, it's not just money. Uh, value could be things that are invisible, uh, things that learn that are learned from managing conflicts, uh, things that learn from others and also time spent with others, communication process with others, and the experience of cooperating with others toward a common goal. And the connection with others and the warm feelings uh, are also considered value, valuable. And good memory, as well as participation in the project itself. All of these are valuable, therefore um, can be considered as value to the participant. So discussion motivators. Um, through the results, we can tell that motivators have, a, have, have an influence, have an impact on the results of teamwork. And students' ex extrinsic motivators can be transformed into intrinsic motivators through participation of team, teamwork activities. According to Pink, uh, the secret to high performance is not rewards and punishments which are ex extrinsic but intrinsic motivators the drive to do things for their own sake uh, to do things because they matter so through this project team members with the intrinsic motivators reported strong feeling of accomplishment and fun participating rewarding autonomy uh, according to near measurement effect uh, when people are asked what they intend to do they become more likely to act in accordance with their answers. So through this team or the project, a member's autonomy is reinforced and they tend to challenge more even if there's a possibility to fail. Last, nudge. Uh, DCM Flast uh, stated that providing meaningful choice is central to in supporting a person's autonomy. And uh, therefore nudging with uh, with uh, providing, uh, meanwhile, providing meaningful choices um, can have a very can have de can have a delayed effects, which reinforce pers uh, people's autonomy. So, as educators are nudging uh, while providing choices to students, will make a big difference. I like to wrap up with uh, DC and Flash uh, saying. People are organisms who, by nature, explore, develop, and take on challenges. Thank you. Deepika Ratan is a research scholar from the Department of